everyone. So thank you for joining me for my bedtime read aloud tonight. Uh, tonight I'm going to be reading my all-time favorite bedtime book, and that is The Pout Pout Fish and the Can't Sleep Blues. Now, before we get started with the book, I wanted to ask you a question. I wanted to see why do you think we need to sleep? Why is it so important? Uh, well, sleep in general does a lot of things for us. One of the things it does is help us to grow. So all of the growing that we do happens while we sleep. It also helps us become smarter. So if we are learning something in the day, so say we are learning how to read or write, we could be learning maybe a sport or um, maybe learning to ride a bike or a new skill. Um, even studies show video games. So if you're spending the day kind of trying to figure something out and practice it, well, what happens is after you do that, if you sleep, your brain kind of stores that information. And when you wake up the next day, you're that much smarter than you were the day before, or at least a little bit smarter. And it's a little bit easier than it was the day before. So the best way to keep learning and growing is to sleep. And if you do that every night, you'll get a little bit stronger and a little bit smarter than you were the day before, which is what we all want. It also helps us to be a little bit healthier and it helps our immune systems to be stronger as well. So being able to kind of fight off bugs, germs, flus, all of that um, becomes better when we get sleep. So sleep not only helps us, but it helps kind of everyone around us stay healthy too. So sleep is something I really think of as a superpower. And if we keep getting a good night's sleep, we just become stronger, healthier, smarter, and happier too. It does help our mood a lot. <laughs> um, so, so in this book, we are going to see, can the pout pout fish get some sleep? Um, and one of the things I actually love about sleep is that it's one of the only things that every single animal in the whole world and every person needs to do. Other than eating, sleep is one of the only things that every single animal and person in the whole world have in common. Even a teeny tiny fruit fly needs to get a full night's sleep. <laughs> um, so it's important not only for us, but for everyone. Um, and today we're going to learn a little bit about the sleep of ocean animals. And if you think about it, it might be kind of tricky to sleep in the ocean. Do you think? Like, how do ocean animals find ways to sleep? Um, but they do, because it's so important, they figure out a way to sleep. And in this book, we are going to visit how the pout pout fish finds a way to sleep. Um, and what we'll see is also the sleep of his friends as well. So we'll see some other ocean animals and how they sleep. And we'll see how this unique little guy finds his way to sleep, or does he? Um, and then at the end, what we can do is think about and talk about our own unique ways of, of finding um, ways to sleep. All right. So, The Pout Pout Fish and the Can't Sleep Blues. Now, this book was written by Deborah Dyson and illustrated by Dan Hanna. Um, and um, Deborah was, is actually someone that I emailed uh, not too long ago and asked her some questions about this pout pout fish. <laughs> so if you ever are interested in a book or an author um, or want to tell them that it's your favorite book, you can always find ways to, to contact them and email. And, and I talked with her and she told me some interesting things about this fish. <laughs> All right, so. fish and the can't sleep blues. Late one quiet evening in the inky ocean deep, Mr. Fish blub blubbed, oh I can't get to sleep. His mind was fizzy busy and his fins were full of zit vim. Though he wanted to be dozing, there were zero z's for him. You can see his eyes are open and he's not sleeping. I don't know if you've ever had that where you just can't fall asleep. I can't drop into dreamland. I can't slide into snooze. It's I'm wide awake. It's hard to take the can't sleep blues. A sleepy voice spoke softly. 
Need some tips, inquired Mrs. Clam. Just watch and see, and soon you'll be as drowsy as I am. Smooth your seaweed bedding, and then imagine fluffy sheep. Count them one to twenty, and then presto, fall asleep. Mr. Fish took the advice, but he couldn't catch a snooze. Mrs. Clam, I need more help, Mrs. Clam replied. And when you see Z's in a row, that means they're sleeping. Then a sleepy voice spoke softly. Here's an even better fix. You will love, said Mr. Crab, all my get to sleep quick tricks. Just put on purple PJs and five or six orange socks. Then soothe your busy thinking on a pillow made of rocks. Do you think you'd want a pillow made of rocks? I wouldn't. Mr. Fish took the advice, but he couldn't catch a snooze. Mr. Crab, what now? Mr. Crab replied. <sighs> then a sleepy voice spoke softly. Here's what I would suggest. Guaranteed, said Mr. Eel, to yield a pleasant night's rest. First ripple to the right, or left, then ripple to the right. Next swirl in a circle. Swish, swish, nighty night. Mr. Fish took the advice, but he couldn't catch a snooze. Mr. Eel, what's the deal? Mr. Eel replied. And eels actually do really love getting in between rocks to sleep. Do you think fish do? I don't think so. Then a sleepy voice spoke softly for your slumber in the sea. Here's a plan, said Mrs. Squid, that always does the trick for me. Just widen out your eyes and give four quick tiny blinks. Then slowly close your lids. Automatic 40 winks. Mr. Fish took the advice, but he couldn't catch a snooze. Mrs. Squid, more ideas? Mrs. Squid replied. <sighs> then Mr. Fish heard nothing, just a symphony of snore. He still couldn't sleep. He felt worse than before. See, all his friends are sleeping, but he is wide awake. I took all their suggestions, which I followed to a T. Their methods worked for them. They did not work for me. I don't know what to do. He sank down in the kelp. What good is good advice? It does not always help. Then a sparkly voice emerged. A fish, Mr. Fish, you're partly right. The voice was dear Miss Shimmers. Her smile was kind and bright. But you, but take what you've been given and learn from what you've tried. Build your own solution and trust yourself as the guide. The best advice of all, said Mrs. Shimmer to a friend, is learn what works for you and find your own special blend. With that, she said good night and departed from the scene now Mr. Fish was ready to create his own routine. I'll settle in my spot and I'll smooth my seaweed bed. I'll smooch my snoozy snuggly and then clear my busy head. I'll swoosh in gentle motion in the ocean wide and deep. I'll close my eyes, fins tucked in, and drift right off to sleep. Mr. Fish had tried his best to resolve his can't sleep blues. Mr. Fish, how'd it go? Mr. Fish replied, let's do this one together. So there you go. Mr. Fish was able to find a way to fall asleep. And what I love about this book is that it really kind of shows that every single person has their own unique way of falling asleep. And the reason I chose it as my favorite bedtime book is that, that that's something that I find true um, with all the families that I work with. Everybody kind of has their own unique way of figuring out sleep. Um, so one thing I thought you could do at home is maybe think about what makes your sleep unique? What is it that you like to do that helps you with sleep? Maybe you have a favorite pillow, maybe you have a stuffy um, for Mr. Fish, it was his snoozy snuggly. 
Maybe you like to sleep on your stomach or maybe you like to roll on your back. Um, what is it that you like to do that helps your sleep? This is something you could maybe talk about with your parents or think about if you're not really quite sure. Uh, parents always have great ideas of how you can, can help your sleep. Um, so it's, if you don't know, it's just something you can think about. You could maybe draw a picture. Um, what does your routine look like? Um, for us at home, we actually end up saying goodnight to our fish and giving them a little snack before bed. So that's kind of part of our routine is actually saying goodnight to our fish. So that could be something that could be part of yours, saying goodnight to, to someone or an animal, or maybe we used to say goodnight to the moon. Um, so I'd love to hear what makes your sleep unique and what is it that you love? Um, if you want to post comments below, feel free to share it. I would love to hear. If you want to maybe draw a picture, you could send me it. Um, and I would love to hear back from all of you about what makes your sleep you or unique to you. Um, and, and think about that because we are all unique and we all have our own special way of sleeping. So I hope that helps you maybe think about um, your own special uniqueness and sleep and um, get some great sleep because um, we know it'll make us smarter, stronger, and healthier. Um, so I hope this helps. Um, if you have a favorite bedtime book as part of your routine, um, for ours, if my kids ever ask me to choose one, it's usually this one. <laughs> um, but if you have your own favorite bedtime book, let me know below. Um, I always love to hear about new bedtime books and maybe that's one I can read um, in the future. So share with me below what your favorite book is or if that's part of your routine. Reading can be a great way to, to kind of get ready for sleep. Um, so feel free to share that. I also have on my website all of my favorite, my top 10 favorite bedtime books. So you can check those out as well if you want ideas for a book to read before bed. So um, I hope that helps and um, I hope you all get some, some great sleep very soon. Okay, night night.